Hey, how y'all doing? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about what is the difference between a stop run and a market structure shift. This is a request that I've gotten on various occasions. So I thought it was time just to make a video and in that confusion. So in this video, we're mainly going to be focused on the intraday chart. I've talked about the daily before. If you refer back to the video I made on, I think it was titled something like the only video you would need on daily bias. OK, I'm going to leave a link to that in the video description. After you watch this video, I want you to watch that one as well to cover the daily chart. So you so you'll know when like market structure is 100 percent confirmed and it's and it's not a stop run. Sometimes it still will be a sometimes it still will be a stop run. You got to accept that that's trading. Sometimes you're going to be wrong. That's fine. But if you watch that video on the only video you need on daily bias, you'll you'll stay out a lot of you'll you will stay out of a lot of daily larger time frame stop runs. And it's the same deal with if you want to use your weekly chart, it's the same process. But in this video, we're going to be talking about the intraday chart because it's a little bit more complex than the daily. OK, the daily is definitely cleaner. But the intraday can get kind of noisy and you see all these different highs in here and you're thinking, OK, but what about this one? Boom, that didn't that wasn't a key shift. What about this one? That wasn't a key shift. So you have all these different highs. You don't know which one to choose. It's just a headache, right? Well, by the end of this video, hopefully I can relieve that. So let's take this, for example. I want you to bring your attention to this right here. I'm going to draw a horizontal line on it so you know what I'm referring to. See this high and now look at my cursor. Look where my cursor is moving. You see that high that I just noted? See how that's a swing high level? Highs in the middle with two lower highs on the left and the right. That is that high. Now, if you think about the video that I made on daily bias, what would this be called? You would call that a shift to market structure, right? But it's not in this case. It's not within in this um in this example. On the daily chart, like what we talked about in that video was you want to see a break a high and then you want to see a swing low put in and then it's confirmed, right? You're good to go. That's on a daily chart. OK, again, daily chart a little bit cleaner. You got to be a little bit more precise when you're dealing with intraday. It's not that clean cut on an intraday chart. OK, so here's what you need to know where where and what key liquidity pool is key when it comes to market structure shifts. OK, so, for example, I knew off the rip. Or I, I'm not going to say I knew because this is traded. Anything can happen. But I knew likely the likelihood that this was going to be a stop run was very high, that this was not going to be the key defining moment where this thing just ripped up higher and found its bottom. I figured this was going to be a run on stops. OK, why? Well, note how this this high right here is within a larger bearish trend. What do I mean by that? Well, notice how London session this is. This was um after New York, um, we come into London session, right? So we have London session. See how London session was consistently bearish. It was consistently trending lower, consistently getting beat up. And notice how this high is within that bearish trend. OK, this is just a random high within a London bearish trend this came up and it tagged the high right there. That's why I was convinced that it was buy stops because it wasn't a major liquidity pool. It's still liquidity. Don't get it twisted. That is a liquidity pool. It's an old high. Old highs are liquidity pools, but it's not a major significant liquidity pool. What is a major significant liquidity pool? What am I referring to? Well, what would that be? For example, Hive day, London high previous session or the session high in this case, since this was during that's 6 15 a.m. That's still London session. So the high of London session would be a key liquidity pool where you may see a market structure shift occur. OK, that's a more significant liquidity pool than this, which is just some random high within London session where the trends already set bearish. Now, for example, I want you to imagine with me for a second. Say, for example, this right here, this move right here did this. Boom. You get a nice big move higher. So like this move over here, but say, for example, it happened right here during London session. That would be interesting, possibly. That would be interesting because that is a major liquidity pool. That is the high of London session. And this is a change in trend of London session. That's red to green. It breaks that high. And say, for example, you also got your, which we'll go into a little bit deeper here in a second. You've got your fair value. You've got confirmation, a strong close above that level. Now we're talking. Now we got something cooking possibly for a market structure shift. That is more convincing because that is the session high the session high the session low previous session high previous session low 
like previous days, highs, lows, stuff like that. Those are your key points where you want to keep an eye out for key market structure shifts, not some random high within London session. OK, and also to add even more conviction to it, it was within a bearish fair value gap. It was just now tapping up within a premium within that price range. It was testing bearish order blocks. I mean, no brainer. Like that's not a key market structure shift. That's just a stop run. OK, that's not convincing to me. This is what we call a shift. That is a shift. Big difference, right? See the big difference between this little move right here, cracking this high to this big move, cracking these highs. That little move, that ain't it. This big move, that's it. Why? Because it cracked a key liquidity pool. This move right here was during New York session. So the key times you want to note these key market structure shifts, one, London session is a major one. Okay, London session is where you'll get it, but also New York sometimes as well. Um, you want it, The key point is it needs to be during a very volatile period. Okay, London session and early, early New York session, fairly early New York session, okay? Is where you really want to keep an eye out for those key market structure shifts, where the volume is, where the strength is, right? See how this move right here? This was during this was during New York session, but notice how New York session had a strong convincing move. And by first glance, I can already tell, like if I was to go to a one hour chart, it's it's gonna have that fair value gap. It cracked this high right here. See this? That is London session high. That is a major liquidity pool. It cracked previous, previous session high. All right, I said that twice, catch that. It cracked previous session high. That's a key liquidity pool. That's what you wanna see. That's a key market structure shift. And then when we add, because I made a video on this as well. If you search my channel and heck, I'll just, I'll leave it in the video description as well. I'll leave the link to it. I made a video on key market structure shifts. What did you, what was one of the key things you wanna see in a key market structure shift? We wanna see that fair value gap, right? See, did we get a fair value gap? We sure did, look at that. We got a fair value gap created on the break of that previous session high liquid, taking out that liquidity. That's convincing. That is way more convincing. Would you agree? That is way more convincing than that. That little move right there. That little move within a bearish London trend, taking out the high. Because you got to think also, another thing that's helped me is think about where the opponent, what your opponent in the market is thinking. Or what other, just think about what other traders are thinking that are maybe shorting this. Like for example, this trend is bearish during London session. We got to swing high put in right here. And then imagine real time. I want you to imagine all this on the right side of the chart didn't happen. I want you to imagine all that didn't happen. And I want you to focus on my cursor. Focus tunnel vision on my cursor. Now see like it's coming down right here. Think you're short. You're short. It's starting to come down. It looks like it's going to attack these lows, but you want to manage risk. You want to keep that stop tight. Where are you going to keep that stop? Or where are uninformed traders going to keep that stop? They're going to keep that stop above that high, right? They're going to keep that stop above that high because they want to trail their position. They want to keep that stop tight. They want to trail their position. And what happens? Boom, you get a nice move to clean out that high, right? And you're kind of killing two birds with one stone here, okay? You're taking out those buy stops that shorts are using to trail their position, but you're also pump faking in breakout buyers that think that is a shift in market structure. And that may have been you in the past, okay? That may have been a mistake that you made, but now after this video, hopefully, well, you're gonna correct that mistake, right? So breakout buyers that think that this is a shift in market structure, I think it might be a shift and change. So you're killing two birds with one stone, you're taking out shorts, but you're also taking in breakout buyers. And what do you think breakout buyers are gonna keep their stops? They're gonna keep it likely under a low of day or underneath this swing level right here. And then what happens? Boom, you take out those sell stops. You take those sell stops out of the marketplace and now you kill two birds with one stone, right? Now, we come into New York session and we get this big explosive move to the upside, right? So big difference between that and that, right? So if you take away one thing from this video, let it be this. Your key market structure shifts are gonna happen during key times and off of these key liquidity pools, right? So for example, um, London session, you'll see a lot of key market structure shifts during London session because that's most commonly, that's where the high and low is put in during London session. But sometimes you'll get it during New York as well. Okay, so early New York session is another time where you wanna keep a close eye out for these key market structure shifts. And whenever you get a scenario like that where the trend is already set like London session in this example and you take out an old high like that, many times that's just gonna be a, a run on stops, right? So that's something to keep in mind. So again, one last time, keep an eye on previous session highs, previous days highs, 
Those are key liquidity pools that you want to keep an eye on. All right, because not every single high, not every single high is a key market structure shift when we're dealing with the intraday. Okay, even a daily chart, larger time frame chart as well. It's the same deal. Not every break of a high is a market structure shift. Sometimes it's just a stop run. And also another key important point that I want to make here is you see this move right here. This is what I would call qualify as a shift in market structure. Absolutely. But guess what? You might be wrong still. This thing right here next week, you know what it might do? It might sell all the way off and take out these lows. And you might be wrong. That might just be a run on these stops right here. That happens. You got to accept it. Sometimes it's going to happen. Okay. You can wait for all the criteria. You can wait for that fair value gap. You can wait for it to grow to break a previous session high have all the criteria you want and still have it pull the rug on you and you got to accept it but if you manage your risk correctly you keep a level head you keep executing your setups okay you're going to come out ahead over time you don't need to be right on every single trade okay because remember we're not playing certainties okay we're playing probabilities we're not playing certainties you can't find i've said this before you can't find certainty in an uncertain environment it's not going to happen you just got to play the probabilities, manage your risk, and you're set.